Hi friends welcome to spiritual motivation channel today i would like to bring you the life history of lord hanuma we all would have been reading about lord hanuma knowing about lord hanuma from our childhood but with this video series i am going to bring you the actual life facts and secrets about hanuma let's get into the topic my friends who is hanuma hanuma is considered to be an incarnation of lord shiva a supernatural being who belongs to varnar community the early stage of human beings is called varnar in treta yugam lord mahavishnu has decided to take incarnation in the form of rama on this planet to establish dharma or virtue during those days there were lot of demon like ravan and his surrounding kirtankin and his community so lord mahavishnu has decided to take incarnation of in the form of rama and he wanted another powerful being with him to establish dharma that is why lord shiva also has decided to take incarnation in the form of lord hanuma in treta yuga to establish dharma during treta yuga time there was a couple by name anjana devi and kesavi anjana devi is not an ordinary person though she belongs to vanar community she took birth on this planet for a cause one fine morning she was standing on the top of a mountain and looking at the new born sun on the sky suddenly she felt that someone was approaching her in an invisible form and trying to communicate her he is none other than vayu deva the god of air has approached her and started communicating to her saying that she has born on this planet for a cause to give birth to a child who is having supernatural powers who is considered to be the incarnation of lord shiva and since she is a very auspicious person lord shiva has chosen her to take birth in the form of lord hanuma from her womb the lord of air has inserted lord shiva's incarnation into the womb of anjana devi and he disappeared suddenly anjana devi started feeling pains of delivery you may wonder why suddenly how can it happen because the child is such an energized personality who is an incarnation of lord shiva one cannot sustain it for longer time in the womb my friends so she had to rush into the nearest cave to give birth to the child who is considered to be the incarnation of lord shiva the child was having eight supernatural powers which were considered to be ashta siddhis in sanskrit ashta siddhi means eight supernatural powers by birth the child was having the child was very energized personality these eight qualities were number 1 anima means he can decrease the size of the body decrease the volume of the body to a micro level second ashta siddhi mahima which means he can increase the body volume and size to infinite extent 
to any extent number 3 garima means he can increase the weight of the body without increasing the size or volume of the body this weight can be any extent without any limit number 4 lagima means he can decrease the weight of the body to any extent without decreasing the size or volume of the body so that it will facilitate him to float on the water to fly in the air with the body number 5 prapti prapti means he can obtain any instrument just by will and wish into his hands it can be any weapon or anything number 6 prakamya it means the five element of the universe has no barricade the fire will not touch him he can travel through earth he can travel through the sky he can travel through the water he can fly on the air the five elements of the planet has no barricade for him number 7 ishitwa means he has divya drushti he can foresee anything which is not possible by a normal human being eighth quality vashitva means he can attract any creature he can control the mind of any creature he can control his own senses he has bond with these eight supernatural powers so now anjana devi had gone out of the cave hunting for fruits to eat at this moment the new born child had come out of the cave and he saw the newly born sun on the sky which is red in color and this child found it very attractive he started flying towards it the sun started getting bigger so he started increasing his volume of the body by using mahima ashtasiddhi he has approached close to the sun and generally the children will have the tendency of keeping anything in the mouth if they see any new thing they just keep it in the mouth so he has increased his body volume to such an extent that the sun can fit into his mouth and as i told you some time back fire has no barricade for him fire cannot touch him suddenly rahu saw this rahu went to indra who considered to be the king of the gods who lives in other dimension indra came to the spot within a fraction of second on his vehicle called airavat airavat is considered to be in the form of an elephant and it will be white in the color so when hanuma tried to swallow the sun indra has appeared close by along with his vehicle airavat so this kidish minded hanuma has diverted his focus from sun to the airavat which is in the form of an elephant white in color a very cute like a puppy toy and suddenly he started traveling towards the airavat and he started keeping airavat into his mouth then indra got anger and understood that there is something is going wrong with this boy and he took his vajrayudh his weapon called vajrayudh diamond weapon which was given by lord shiva he threw the vajrayudh towards the boy and this vajrayudh hit on his left jaw and he lost consciousness from the sky he fell down to the same mountain cave where he was born he fell on the mountain and he lost his consciousness in certain scriptures it was even written that his life has been taken out at that moment the lord of the wind vayu deva has got to know about this and he came here suddenly and he knew that this boy has born as incarnation of lord shiva he has come he has come to the earth for a purpose 
so he cannot die just like this so vayu deva the lord of the wind has stopped flowing on this planet not only on the planet even inside the bodies of the animals the air has stopped flowing so now all the gods have come to know about this and suddenly they all have appeared near to the mountain to address this matter vayu deva has stopped flowing on this planet not only outside even within the bodies of the creatures lord of the wind stopped flowing his wind he has withdrawn his power of the wind on this planet because of this no creature on this planet was able to breathe this was a very critical condition this can affect the beings on this earth so all the gods have realized what is going to happen in the next moment and they all have present at this mountain near to the body of this boy suddenly brahma also has appeared on the spot lord brahma is considered to be the god of the creation so immediately lord brahma has touched the body of the boy immediately the boy's life has been regained at that moment now immediately the lord of the wind vayu deva has stopped the strike and he started flowing on this planet normally so now all the creatures were able to breathe properly even lord brahma has told to all the gods that this boy has been the incarnation of lord shiva and he has born on this planet for a purpose lord mahavishnu is going to take the incarnation as lord rama on this planet to kill all the demons and to establish dharma virtue on this planet this boy will play a crucial role in ramayan to support lord rama without this boy ramayanam cannot be achieved establishing dharma cannot be achieved on this planet so brahma has given life to this boy again and now all the gods started blessing this boy lord brahma has blessed him stating that he will not be affected by any of the weapons any of the astras that are going to be used by anybody on this planet he cannot be bind by even brahmastra which was considered to be the highest powerful astra during those days then lord indra has given him blessing that his vajrayudham also cannot touch this boy and lord indra has named this boy as hanuma in sanskrit hanuma means the jaw indra's vajrayudh was hit on the jaw of this boy that is why the name has been kept as hanuma and sun has blessed him lord sun has blessed him with the shining and brightness equal to 1 by 100 of the sun's shining and brightness and lord varuna has blessed him that this boy will never get tired in his life he will never get any diseases in his body and lord brahma has also blessed him that he will be a chiranjeevi means he will attain death only at his will and wish whenever he want he will get death till then no one can kill him from now on who has been born just a couple of hours back who had ashta siddhis that is eight supernatural powers like anima mahima garima lagima prapti prakamya ishitva vashitva 
in addition to these eight supernatural powers no weapon can touch him no brahmastra can touch him no vajrayud can touch him he will not get tiredness he will not get any disease he has no death he gets death only at his will and wish imagine the power of this being power of this vanar within 2 hours of the lifetime he got now all the gods have disappeared hanuma's mother anjana devi has carried this boy to their home with this power the childish minded hanuma doesn't know what to do with this power so he was using this powers in a kiddish way he was playing with everybody he was troubling with everybody with his powers he didn't know how to use this power what to do with this powers as the time passes as this boy started turning into man's baby he started troubling nearby rishis and munis and yogis he went into nearby rishis ashram with his kiddishness with his all supernatural powers he started troubling these rishis munis and yogis so those rishis understood that this boy has born with a purpose on this planet to support lord rama and he has to remain on this planet till then but his powers are troubling everyone around him because of his kiddishness so immediately the rishis has given this boy a curse stating that this boy should forget all his supernatural powers till the time comes when the right time comes a right person a very spiritual divine person will remind about his supernatural powers that is when he will be reminded about it he will attain those powers again when the time comes till then this boy hanuma had to forget all the powers that he is having otherwise he is going to be a troublesome to all these people surrounding to him because he is using these powers out of kiddishness so due to this rishi's curse hanuma had forgotten all his supernatural powers and he started living life as a normal kid along with all vanaras surrounding to his house now i will give you a little more information about lord hanuma my friends lord hanuma in future has played tremendous role very powerful role in ramayanam without lord hanuma there is no ramayanam so in future we will understand how hanuma has regained these powers who has reminded him about these powers and how he has used these powers to establish dharma on this planet during treta yugam how he has supported lord rama by using these supernatural powers to establish dharma we will understand in the future episodes my friends today i am going to reveal one more secret about hanuma even today lord hanuma is alive in himalayas in gandha madana mountain in himalayas lord hanuma is still alive today in a cave because he is chiranjeevi he attains death only at his will and wish no one can kill him he is chiranjeevi even today he is alive in gandha madan parvat i met one himalayan yogi who happened to meet lord hanuma and he had taken his blessings in gandha madan mountain in a secret cave my friends in our previous episodes we understood the childhood events and the birth secrets of hanuma now the hanuma is grown up he has become an expert in all four vedas rigvedam yajurvedam atharva vedam sama vedam and he turned to be a great yogi expert in pranayama the yogis also called as vatatmajam 
Hanuma's another name is Vatatmajam means his soul is completely filled with air he has got certain yoga siddhis also the yogis generally will have super powers like they can transform themselves into any other form whichever they want and they can take multiple bodies at the same time whenever they want so these are the siddhis which yogis will generally have my friends now the next situation begins in kishkindha kanda kishkindha is the name of the kingdom which is under the purview of ayodhya ayodhya is being ruled by bharat who is a brother of lord rama kishkindha kingdom is being ruled by vali now in kishkindha kingdom the story begins on top of rishya muka mountain on top of this rishya muka mountain the ex king of kishkindha mr sugriva is taking shelter along with his four ministers these people are called vanaras vanaras are the early stage of human beings which are belonging to the monkeys community on top of this mountain sugriva is observing all the surroundings of rishya muka mountain why are why sugriva and along with his four ministers are taking shelter in rishya muka mountain is sugriva's brother vali is looking to kill sugriva vali has abducted sugriva's wife and he kicked sugriva out of the kingdom so sugriva has life threat from vali that is the reason he is taking shelter in rishya muka mountain along with his four ministers vali and his army cannot enter into this rishya muka mountain because vali had a curse from a saint from a yogi from a rishi the moment vali and his soldiers enters into the rishya muka mountain they will die on spot that is the reason sugriva is taking shelter on top of this mountain along with his four ministers now the main story begins my friends sugriva observed that two men are approaching towards the mountain those two men are having arms like swords they have a bow on their hand they have arrows on their back so sugriva understood that vali would have sent someone to kill me so that vali anyhow vali cannot enter into this mountain that is the reason vali has brought someone from a different dimension and he is sending to kill me into this mountain so sugriva got scared he got tension immediately and he jumped from rishya muka mountain to the next mountain with just one jump my friends understand the power of these vanaras with just one one jump sugriva has jumped into another mountain and the moment four ministers observed that their king has jumped into other mountain these four ministers also started following taking jump along with sugriva so these four ministers understood that sugriva is in tension so one of the ministers among four is hanuma whose life story we are understanding today my friends one of the minister is hanuma hanuma has turned to be the fantastic speaker you will understand how nicely hanuma speaks in this events suddenly hanuma started speaking with sugriva oh king why are you feeling tensed why are you getting afraid and why are you running away then sugriva replied that there are two men whom vali has sent near to the rishya muka mountain they are having arrows bow and sword and those two men are not an ordinary human beings they came from different dimension because one man is blue in color another man is golden in color generally these kind of human beings we will not find on this planet these two men have been brought by wali from different planet different dimensions 
just to kill me that is the reason they are approaching towards this mountain that is why i am getting afraid and i am running away to save my life now hanuma replied immediately stating that o oh, king those two men by looking at their body language i can understand that they did not come to kill anybody they didn't come here to hunt you they are in search of something they are searching for something during the process they have come here by looking at their body language i can find this and yes as you said these two men are appearing completely different they are not a norm- normal human beings they look like they came from a different dimensions because one man blue in color one man is golden in color you will not find these kind of human beings on this planet so what i will do i will approach them i will go to them and i will speak to them and understand what is the requirement what is the reason they come to this mountain i will try to make friendship with you to them allow me to go then sugriva allowed him to go and speak to those two men immediately hanuma he instead of approaching in warner physical form he transformed his physical form into a saint so that the other men will receive them nicely in those days saints and rishis and yogis are being treated highly respectable beings during those days that is the main reason hanuma transformed himself into a saint and he started walking towards those two men the moment hanuma reached close to those two men hanuma suddenly mesmerized and he got one divine feeling and one spiritual feeling in his heart suddenly hanuma fell on the feet of those two men those two men are none other than rama and lakshmana my friends this is the first meeting of hanuma in ramayan to meet ram and lakshman the man who is blue in color is called rama the man who is golden in color is lakshmana those two men are more than 8 feet tall my friends it is written in ramayan clearly those two men are more than 8 feet tall and their colors are completely different their body shape is completely different their hands are till the knees they are called as ajanu bahum ajanu bahum aravinda dalaya daksham means their hands are till the knee and their eyes are like a lotus flower so big you don't feel these kind of characters on this planet my friends hanuma fell on the feet of those two men and suddenly woke up here the first conversation starts between hanuma and rama this conversation is going to be beautiful fantastic fabulous you will not get you will not find these kind of conversations in any books any scriptures only in ramayana you will find these kind of scriptures my friends so let us understand how the conversation begins between hanuma and rama hanuma has taken the form of a monk to speak to ram and lakshman the monk transformed hanuma has reached ram lakshman with intention to make friendship between sugriva and ram lakshman now the moment hanuma reached close to ram hanuma suddenly felt a divine feeling a spiritual feeling which cannot be expressed in words so what hanuma did suddenly he fell on the feet of rama on the floor because he has understood that the god men has approached them hanuma has felt lot of divine feeling the moment his aura connects with ram generally a monk or saint should not touch the feet of any human beings here because hanuma felt the god man feeling about ram that is the main reason he touched the feet of rama now hanuma got up and started interacting with rama 
observe the conversation of hanuma very carefully hanuma starts like this rajarshi deva pratimau means hanuma is calling them as rajarshi the kings rishi and deva pratimau means both of you are looking like gods or the god men both of you are looking like you came from a different dimension you does not belong to this planet by looking at you i can understand that you both are belonging to the king's dynasty you both are having capacity to rule the entire planet which contains himalayas kailash mountain vindhya mountain etc and both are you walking like lions both are you looking like lions your hands are looking like so hard like a elephant's trunk and you both are looking at the trees you both are searching for something i can understand by your body language you both are looking like disappointed and your arrows are looking like snakes literally they are looking like cobras and you both are looking like very rich men god men and divine men but still why are you disappointed you are exhaling with your disappointment i can understand that both of you are searching for something you both are looking at the trees and looking surroundings and searching for something after having so many qualities why are you disappointed and both of you are looking like sun and the moon one man is looking like the sun one man is looking like the moon both are so shining both are so brightening and lightening still you both are disappointed and looking at the surrounding can i know the reason why are you disappointed number 1 and hanuma started saying about his king sugriva to rama my king sugriva is very dharmatma he follows virtue but his brother wali has kicked sugriva out of the kishkindha kingdom and wali has abducted sugriva's wife and retained with him hence sugriva is helpless sugriva has sent me as a messenger to reach you and to make friendship between you and my king sugriva by the way my name is hanuma i am a vanar this is a conversation what hanuma has started under my friends please understand let us analyze this conversation being a minister hanuma has never disclosed himself as a minister and please observe the conversation how hanuma started first he started praising the opposite person in a genuine way number 1 and he started praising his king sugriva and he was telling about his good things and about his dharma and third thing he has just introduced himself with the name he never praised himself when he is conversing when he is talking to rama please understand a minister how he has to bring friendship between two people is praise the opposite person praise his boss and just introduce himself so so that they will feel comfortable this is how a minister should act an intelligent minister should act my friends now ram has understood about him suddenly hanuma has revealed his original form he transformed himself from a monk to vanar and he told that just to reach you in a comfortable way i have i have taken the form of the monk otherwise i am not a monk i am a vanar he revealed his true form of vanar ram immediately understood that this man is very genuine but ram has not spoken to hanuma even a single word ram has started interacting with lakshman about hanuma let us understand what are those words ram is telling to lakshmana like this this man is speaking very nicely in a very polite way sugriva who has this kind of messenger who has sent this kind of messenger the sugriva should be very lucky to have this kind of person and this gentleman this hanuma 
is an expert in rigveda yajurveda and samaveda because this man is pronouncing certain letters from his navel the vibration when he is pronouncing certain letters he is bringing the vibration at his navel level when he is pronouncing certain letters he is bringing the vibration at his heart level which is anahata chakra certain letters he is pronouncing from his throat which is vishuddhi chakra and certain letters he is pronouncing is vibrating his tongue and certain letters he is vibrating his agni chakra his agni chakra lies between two eyebrows my friends so ram being the highly realized yogi and divine man he is able to find the divinity in the opposite person as well so in this situation hanuma in the first introduction stage itself he understood the divinity of rama and after speaking ram understood the divinity of hanuma so ram is communicating to lakshman that this man is an expert in vedas only a man who is expert in all these three vedas alone can only pronounce the letters like this can only bring the vibration in the, about the respective word in the respective chakra so this man is an expert in vedas he is a yogi ram has understood and he has communicated the same thing to lakshman and ram has asked lakshman to communicate with hanuman because ram is a king king should not speak to the messenger directly so king has told lakshman to communicate to hanuman hanuma has met ram and lakshman first time in ramayanam during the first meeting itself first meeting is the best meeting first impression is the best impression in the first meeting itself ram was very much impressed about the way hanuma has spoke to him now hanuma has asked to rama finally why are you coming into this riksha mukha mountain which is filled with animals and snakes and what are you searching for in this mountain now rama has looked at lakshman to answer hanuma question now the conversation begins between lakshman and hanuma please understand my friends ram did not even speak to hanuma during the initial days here lakshman started replying to hanuma question let's start the conversation between lakshman and hanuma lakshman said we belongs to ayodhya kings dynasty ram is the prince of ayodhya our father name is dasharath maharaj king dasharath has ruled ayodhya very peacefully he has no enemies he has hated no one and no one has hated dasharath in turn ram is the elder son of dasharath the day before rama is about to crown himself as the king ram has to leave ayodhya and he has to go to forest for 14 years due to a promise made by our father to kausalya to fulfill father's promise ram has decided to move to forest for 14 years and being dharma patni of rama sita also moved to forest along with her husband rama and i being the brother of rama i being the devotee of rama i also followed rama to the forest to stay along with him the days in forest were going very happily one fine day in my absence and in my brother's absence one demon by name ravan has approached to our place in a flying saucer and in our absence ravan has abducted sita ravan has kidnapped sita he has taken her along with him in his flying saucer forcibly then from that day sita has been abducted my brother and myself are searching for whereabouts of sita 
but we got the clue that ravan has abducted sita we just know his name but we are not aware about where ravan stays where is his kingdom and what is his strength we are searching for the place where sita is staying and where ravan kingdom is during the process during the searching process we met one person by name kabandha and he has guided us he has directed us to go to rishya muka mountain wherein we will get the friendship of a right people who follow dharma who follow virtue by name sugriva so we came to rishya muka mountain to do friendship with sugriva we came to request sugriva to search the whereabouts of sita the moment hanuma heard this he felt very happy in fact even hanuma wanted the same thing he wanted ram and lakshman to do friendship with sugriva whereas they are coming for friendship with sugriva only so hanuma felt very happy and hanuma has asked them that he want to introduce both of them to sugriva so hanuma made ram to sit on one of his shoulders and lakshman to sit on the other shoulder and hanuma flew from there along with ram and lakshman to the mountain next to rishyamukha mountain wherein hanuma is staying hanuma has jumped into and hanuma took both of them into the mountain and the moment all three are landed they found that sugriva is missing in the mountain out of fear sugriva has jumped into the second mountain to hide himself suddenly hanuma understood this and hanuma took permission from ram and lakshman for some time to bring sugriva now you have to understand one brilliant thing what hanuma did hanuma transformed himself into a monk again and he started walking to sugriva in the next mountain so that sugriva is already tensed he will feel comfortable the moment he see him in a monk form and he approached sugriva and he told that things are all fine they are all ram and lakshman who are the prince of ayodhya kingdom and they want to do friendship with sugriva the moment sugriva heard that he felt very happy he lost his fear he lost his tension here hanuma brought sugriva to the mountain where he brought ram and lakshman here the conversation begins between ram lakshman and sugriva along with his four ministers my friends follow this conversation very carefully this is going to be very beautiful conversation now the conversations begin by sugriva sugriva says to ram and lakshman that his wife has been abducted by his brother wali the wali is a very powerful warner there is no one on this planet who can stop wali who can resist wali in the current generation so he lost his wife his wife is with wali he is waiting for a friend who can help him in getting his wife back and to kill wali here ram started conversation with sugriva my friends please follow it very carefully ram says his wife also has been abducted by a demon by name ravan he has abducted her in a flying saucer so he he doesn't know where is the kingdom of ravan to which place he belongs to and where he is hiding sita he promised ram has promised to sugriva that however powerful may be the wali ram is going to kill wali ram has promised to sugriva that since dharma is on sugriva side the virtue is on sugriva side ram is going to kill wali and ram has promised sugriva that by killing wali he is going to make sugriva as the king of kishkindha kingdom and ram has asked internal help from sugriva to find the where abouts and the existence and the kingdom of ravan please understand my friends ram has asked sugriva 
just to find the address and whereabouts of Ravan. Ram has not asked Sugriva for help in killing Ravan. Please understand. Ram knew that there is no one who is equal to him on this planet. Not only on this planet, even on the entire universe. Because he is the incarnation of Lord Mahavishnu. He and Lakshman also knew the power of Rama. Since he has taken the birth as a human being, he is behaving as a human being. Otherwise, there is no barricade for Rama. Ram has asked for help of Sugriva in searching for Ravan's kingdom. So here, immediately Hanuma has done a very intelligent thing. Hanuma took the dried branches of a tree. He took two dried branches of the tree. He started rubbing with each other and he has created a fire out of that. And he made a fire. He kept the fire in between Ram and Sugriva. He has ensured that both Ram and Sugriva has promised, has taken the oath for each other by keeping their palm on the fire. During those days, a promise which is taken over the fire is considered to be the most powerful and you can't even take back that oath that you made on the fire. If you observe Vedas, Vedas talk about the fire. Fire is the most powerful thing and when someone takes oath on the fire, they have to be bind by that. So Hanuma being the minister of Sugriva intelligently has rubbed the dried branches of the tree. He created fire out of that and he, he has made Ram and Sugriva to take oath on the fire. Ram has promised to Sugriva that Ram is going to kill Wali and he is going to make Sugriva as the king of Kishkindha kingdom. And Sugriva in turn has promised to Ram on the fire that after he becoming the king of Kishkindha, he is going to send his entire Vanar army and he is going to find the whereabouts of Sita. He is going to find the place where Ravan has hidden Sita. This is a promise that both has taken on the fire. After taking the oath on the fire, Sugriva has disclosed one secret to Rama. Sugriva said, few months back, one flying saucer was flying over the Rishya Muka mountain. In the flying saucer, one lady was shouting like Ram, Ram, Ram. She was shouting your name continuously. She must be your wife. And after observing five of us on this mountain, she tear a piece of sari, a piece of cloth from sari, and she took out certain jewels from her body. She kept the jewels into the piece of cloth she tied it and threw it towards us and she started shouting Ram, Ram, Ram. Then we collected those piece of jewelries and we are keeping with us. Now I am going to bring it to you. So immediately Sugriva went and brought the bundle of jewels which Sita has dropped from the flying saucer and he has given it to Ram. The moment Ram saw the bundle, he understood that the piece of cloth was the same color and same model what Sita was wearing on the day when she was abducted by Ravan. The moment he saw that sari piece, his eyes were filled with tears completely. So Ram told Lakshman to open the bundle and see whether those jewels belong to Sita or not because his eyes are completely filled with tears he could not identify. Then Lakshman opened the bundle of jewels. He started observing one by one. First, he took a jewel which are supposed to keep for years and he could not find it because he never observed Sita fully, her face. 
and he took out certain jewels which were belonging to the neck and he could not even identify those jewels finally he took out one jewel which sita was wearing to the feet immediately lakshman found that yes this is the jewel what sita was wearing to the feet because every day when i was speaking to sita i used to observe her feet i never identified i never observed her face or body i always used to look at her feet when i speak to her that is why i can identify this jewel clearly that this jewels belong to sita immediately ram was broken down his heart was completely broken down his heart was filled with sadness and sorrow he was continuously crying for longer time then sugriva has told some beautiful words to ram in this situation which are useful even to our life my friends we have to follow these words please listen carefully sugriva said during three times the man has to make his heart very strong number 1 when he is going down in his life when he is facing difficulties in his life number 2 when he is losing his money or wealth and number 3 when he is losing his health or when he is getting close to his death during these three situations a man has to make his heart very hard otherwise this is going to have a very bad impact on the life in fact sugriva told one example also if your heart is filled with sorrow completely it is equal to a ship which is traveling on the ocean with a heavy load you never know both are going to sink when so when our heart is filled with sorrow it is equal to a ship which is ready to sink in the sea in the ocean my friends this example has told by sugriva to ram please keep in mind when you are going down when you are facing difficult times in your life you have to make your heart very hard to face it in turn sugriva has told one more word to ram that even if ravan is hiding sita in rasatal and patal we are going to find sita because we have the access even to other dimensions please understand during the ramayan time itself they knew about parallel universes not only knowing about parallel universes my friends they had access rasatal and patal are two nearest universes two nearest dimensions which is close to the earth even warner had access to these dimensions so sugriva has promised to ram that even if ravan is hiding sita in rasatal and patal universe warner had access to that we are going to find sita very soon where i am going to give you the whereabouts of sita very soon don't feel sorrow take it as my word in this situation sugriva has given confidence to rama in the beginning ram has given confidence to sugriva this is the symbol of good friendship best friendship my friends even when we make friendship with someone we have to give them confidence when they are down they have to give us confidence when we are down this is the true friendship this friendship is going to work out now in this moment three people have got their left eye vibrated in hindu custom when a man's left eye is vibrating it is a symbol of something wrong is going to happen to them but when it comes to female when her left eye is vibrating something good is going to happen to her so at this moment sita's left eye started vibrating ravan's left eye started vibrating vali's left eye start vibrating sita understood that this is a sign that something good is going to happen to me ram is on the way to collect, to reach me so sita started feeling very happy and ravan understood that his left eye is vibrating something is wrong going to happen to him same way vali also understood that something wrong is going to happen to him also at this moment ram is very happy lakshman is very happy because they found some clue to find sita they knew that 
the flying saucer flew towards south india towards southern part of india so they knew where to search exactly ram is happy lakshman is happy sugriva is happy by seeing that these three are happy hanuma is also happy please keep in mind hanuma wherever hanuma is there or wherever hanuma name chanting is happening their happiness will come no sorrow no sadness hanuma is the symbol of happiness so start praying hanuma start chanting hanuma name and he will make you happy one more secret i will reveal about hanuma name my friends you know that om is the symbol of three letters a u ma these three letters combinedly will become om but when you observe hanuma ha nu ma a u ma ha nu ma hanuma is nothing but symbol of om om is nothing but universal cosmic energy hanuma is a symbol of universal cosmic energy when you chanting hanuma name it is nothing but you are chanting om name so start chanting hanuma he is going to bring you all happiness how he brought happiness in ram lakshman and sugriva's heart same way may hanuma bring happiness to all the viewers in their lives ram has asked sugriva you being a brother of wali how the rivalry has happened between two brothers so sugriva started saying the complete history about how the rivalry happened between himself and his brother wali a few years back wali was crowned as the king of kishkindha after their father's demise sugriva being the younger brother of wali he was assisting wali in administration and other monitoring matters to rule the kishkindha kingdom but because of one lady the wali and another demon by name mayavi the rivalry happened between wali and mayavi because of a woman one midnight mayavi has come to the palace of wali and he started provoking wali for a fight though it is a midnight it is a matter of prestige for the king if someone enters into his palace started provoking him for a fight he has to face them because of prestige is matter because of that though it is a midnight wali has come out of the palace to fight with mayavi but suddenly mayavi started running back instead of fighting with wali but wali didn't leave him wali started chasing him to kill him because he has challenged by entering into his palace mayavi started running to the nearest mountain he entered inside the cave and he is hiding in the cave wali chasing this mayavi sugriva has observed that wali is chasing mayavi and sugriva also followed along with wali to assist him wali found that mayavi has entered into the cave and wali is also entering inside the cave sugriva following him immediately wali told to sugriva that he has taken a promise from sugriva to not to enter into this cave because that mayavi would have been with many people inside the cave that is the main reason he has entered into this mayavi would be in the cave with lot of demon inside so only wali has got the capacity to face all the demon so sugriva don't have the capacity that is the main reason wali has taken a promise from sugriva to wait outside till he come out of the cave now sugriva is waiting at the cave from quite a long but from inside the cave lot of sounds are coming lot of noises are coming many times demon sounds are making and sometimes wali is making sounds loudly it's happened for more than 1 year 
Sugriva was waiting at the entrance of the cave for one year almost. And after one year, the sounds are completely stopped. No one was coming out of the cave. Unfortunately, the blood stream started flowing out of the cave. This indicates that a lot of demons are inside. But even after one year, Wali didn't come out. No one has stepped out of the cave. He thought everyone would have dead. That is why even after one year, no sounds in the cave. So Sugriva believed that even Wali would have died inside. That is why he is unable to come out even after one year. So out of the fear that this demon may come out, what Sugriva did, he pushed a big stone to the entrance of the cave and he has blocked the cave so that the demon should not come out. He strongly believed that Wali is dead. Sugriva came back after one year to the kingdom and he told the entire story to the ministers of Kishkin the kingdom. So after a few months, ministers suggested that Sugriva has to be crowned as king of the Kishkindha kingdom because the people of Kishkindha needed a king. They wanted a leader for their well-beings. Sugriva denied it. Forcibly, the ministers of Kishkindha has crowned Sugriva because the kingdom need a king to rule the people. And in Warner community, there was a custom. When husband dies, the wife can get married twice to husband's brothers, any of the husband's brother at her will and wish. So what happened? Wally's wife, Tara, her husband didn't come even after more than a year. So she also believed that Wally would have died. So voluntarily, she married Sugriva. And Sugriva was ruling the kingdom along with his wife and Tara, who was ex-wife of Wali. After few months, suddenly Wali has entered into the kingdom. Wali has confronted Sugriva and along with his other ministers also. So everyone was taken away back. Everyone was surprised. Wali came back after more than a year. And Sugriva felt very sad and he felt very sorrow and he told what exactly has happened. He thought, you are dead. I thought you are dead. And that is the main reason I came back to the kingdom. And forcibly the ministers have made me a king. And by thinking that you are dead, your wife Tara also has married me. So this is what the mistake has happened and he has asked for forgiveness. He bowed in front of Wali. He touched the feet of Wali and he asked for forgiveness. But Wali has got hyper anger. He thought, what Wali thought? Sugriva purposefully, he kept, he blocked the entrance of the cave with a big stone so that he should not come out. So that Sugriva can rule Kishkin the kingdom. And Sugriva voluntarily has taken, he has abducted Tara. So Wali misunderstood. With this misunderstanding, Wali got hyper anger and he started fighting with Sugriva and he wanted to kill Sugriva for revenge. Wali has abducted Sugriva's wife and he has kept with him. Sugriva ran out of the kingdom. Sugriva has no choice because he can't confront, he can't face Wali. Wali is the most strongest man on this planet at that time. Even Ravan, there was an issue, there was a fight between Ravan and Wali. During the fight, even Ravan could not confront, could not face Wali. Wali has defeated Ravan in a fight. That story we will understand later. So in this situation, Sugriva has to run out of the kingdom, Tishkin the kingdom. And Wali had a curse previously from a Rishi that Wali and his army should not enter into the Rishya Mukha mountain. So Sugriva knew this curse. That is the main reason he went and, and taken shelter in Rishya Mukha mountain. 
So Griva's four ministers, out of which, out of whom one is Hanuma, also followed them. All these five were hiding in Prashyamukha mountain to save themselves from Wali. So Sugriva has explained this entire story to Ram. Ram has understood why there has been a rivalry between Sugriva and Wali. Ram has analyzed who has dharma in this situation. Ram has understood that Wali's wife Tara she voluntarily, by thinking that Wali is dead, she voluntarily married to Sugriva. Sugriva has never forced Tara, he has never abducted Tara to retain with him. Whereas, in turn, Wali has forcibly abducted Sugriva's wife without her consent. So, there is no dharma in favor of Wali. Whereas, Sugriva has not violated any dharma which was existing in that time, in Ramayan time. So, Ram, after listening to the story, he understood that Wali is going against dharma. That is why, as a prince of Ayodhya, whoever violates dharma, whoever abducts a woman, whoever abducts someone else's wife, for them, the punishment is death sentence as per the law prevailing that time in Ayodhya. So, Ram has decided to kill Wali and to release Sugriva's wife from the custody of Wali and he wants to make Sugriva as the king of Kishkindha. Sugriva has doubt on Ram's capacity and caliber. He wanted to check, he wanted to confirm whether Ram has got the power, capacity and caliber to kill Wali. Because Wali was considered to be the most powerful personality on the planet in those days. So, Sugriva was asking Rama, Hey Ram, do you know the capacity and strength of Wali? You promised me that you are going to kill Wali. But let me explain you the strength and capacity of Wali. Please confirm whether you can kill him or not. Sugriva started explaining the strengths of Wali. Every day, early in the morning, Wali wakes up at Brahma Muhurtam. It starts at early morning, 3.30 a.m. And for doing Sandhya Vandanam, for doing nature salutation, what Wali does is, from Kishkindha, he takes a jump and starts flying in the air. With one jump, Wali will reach to the east pole of this earth. And after doing Sandhya Vandanam on east side of the planet, again he will start taking a jump. He starts flying. With one jump, he reaches to the west part of the planet. After doing Sandhya Vandanam on west side, he takes a jump towards south side of the ocean. From south side of this planet, with one more jump, he reaches to north pole of this planet. So, Wali has got the capacity to take jump from one side of this planet to other side of the planet. He can cross all these seven oceans with just one jump. That is the strength, that is the speed of Wali. After completing his Sandhya Vandanam, he comes back to Kishkindha kingdom and he approaches a mountain he started doing exercise. What Wali do is, he increased the size of his body and he starts doing weight lifting with the mountains. He lift a mountain and he start doing weight lifting and exercise with that mountain with his hands. 
that is the strength of wali and not only that there are sala vruksham means the sky creeper trees in kishkindha kingdom the trees are as tall as touching to the clouds of the sky and the roots are almost gone miles into the earth so that no one can even pluck out the trees the roots are gone so deeply that one cannot pluck out the trees so what wali does is he holds the sala vruksham the sky creeper tree and he shakes the tree so hardly in such a way that all the leaves of that sky creeper tree will fall down within a moment that is the power of wali and not only that i will give one incident which has happened recently there was a strong man on this planet by name dundhubi this dundhubi one day he has approached parvata raju the king of himalayan mountains for a fight dundhubi started provoking parvata raju for a fight but parvata raju has immediately surrendered himself to dundhubi that he is not capable of fighting with him so he wanted to ask for apology he wanted to ask for an excuse do you know who is this parvata raju the king of himalayas he is the father in law of lord shiva parvata raju is the father of goddess parvati even this parvata raju the king of himalayan mountains was unable to fight with dundhubi that is why he has surrendered himself to dundhubi and he told that there is one powerful man on this planet by name wali so if you have capacity dundhubi please go and fight with wali he is the right person to fight so immediately dundhubi ego got hurt so dundhubi want to show that he is superior on this planet immediately he came to kishkindha kingdom during the late evening times and he has asked wali to come for a fight so wali has confronted dundhubi so immediately dundhubi started speaking like this hey wali tonight i came to fight with you but since it is very late in the evening i will excuse you for tonight and i will come tomorrow morning during the night whom ever you want to meet meet whom ever you want to speak speak with whom ever you want to spend the time spend because tomorrow morning i am going to kill you wali so dundubi has provoked wali like this then immediately wali replied stating that hey dundubi you don't have to wait till tomorrow morning let's have a fight tonight i don't mind even if it is night so wali and dundubi started fighting with each other with just four punches wali has killed dundubi dundubi started bleeding from mouth nose ears eyes with just four shots dundubi was killed you know what is the secret before entering into the fight wali has gone into his room he had one chain which was given to his father by lord shiva lord shiva has given one chain to wali's father he wore that chain and he has come for a fight with dundubi that chain has got the blessings from lord shiva as long as he is wearing the chain on his neck no one can kill him in the universe not only in the universe even in parallel universes no one has got capacity to kill wali as long as he is wearing the chain on his body this chain was blessed by lord shiva that is why he was able to kill dundubi with just four shots so this is the power of wali and not only that after killing dundubi 
Wali has lifted the body of Dundubi. He threw with his hand so hardly in such a way that the body of Dundubi has fallen after 8 miles around 12 kilometers far away from the place. It's called Yojanam. In those days in Ramayanam time, the distance was measured in Yojanam. So the body was thrown one Yojanam away. One Yojanam is equals to eight miles distance. And when the body was passing in the air, the blood of Dundubi fell in Matanga Maharshi's premises. Matanga Rishi has very energized personality. He has done lot of tapasu. He has got lot of power in him by doing tapasu. So immediately he went into meditation. He used his Divya Drishti. The once Agna Chakra between eyebrows is activated. It gives Divya Drishti for them. So immediately he has become Antarmukham and he saw with his Divya Drishti from where this blood has fallen. He understood that Wali has threw the body of Dundubi and that is why the blood has fallen into his premises. Immediately he got anger and he has given a curse to Wali that Wali or his army or his no people cannot enter into nearby Vrishyamukha mountain. The moment they enter, they will die. He has given a curse. Wali got to know about the curse given by Matanga Maharshi. He came and fell on the feet of Matanga Maharshi. But Maharshi did not excuse Wali because he knew that this curse will help Ram and Sugriva. That is why he has not withdrawn his curse. Because of this curse, Sugriva was able to take shelter in Rishyamukha mountain. So this is the strength of Wali, which Sugriva has explained to Ram. And he asked, Hey Ram, can you sustain this capacity of Wali? Because Wali has got a chain which is given by Lord Shiva himself. The supreme power himself has given a blessed chain to him. As long as he is having that, no one can kill him. Sugriva has asked Rama whether he has got capacity to kill Wali or not. So, Sugriva said, I am going to conduct you two tests. You have to pass the test to satisfy myself that you have got capacity to kill Wali. So immediately Lakshman started laughing so loudly because Lakshman knew the capacity and strength and power of Ram. So but still Ram is okay for test. So Ram has asked what is the first test. Sugriva has taken Ram to the body of Dundubi, which Wali has through one Yojanam distance, that is 12 kilometer distance. Now, Dundubi body is left only with skeleton. Sugriva asked Ram to kick the skeleton of Dundubi and he want to see how much distance that Ram has got capacity to kick the skeleton. Immediately, Ram has kicked the skeleton of Dundubi with his left thumb, only with one thumb. And the skeleton flew around 12 Yojanam distance, which is absolutely 96 miles. That is 144 kilometers in one kick with just left leg thumb, my friends. That is the power of Rama. Still, Sugriva is not satisfied. He wanted to conduct second test also. Sugriva said, this skeleton is completely dried. So probably, uh, Wali has, when Wali threw the body, it was full of meat and very heavy. Now only skeleton is left out. Kicking 144 kilometers may not be a big deal. So still Sugriva want to conduct a second test to Rama. So he took Rama to the sky creeper trees, the Sala Vraksham, the garden which contain lot of Sala Vraksham. And Sugriva has asked Ram to hit one Sala Vraksham 
द स्काई क्रीपर ट्री विथ जस्ट वन एरो इमिडिएटली लक्ष्मण स्टार्ट ए लॉफिंग लाउट लिए गई राम हैज एक्सेप्टेड फॉर दिस चैलेंज ऑल्सो फॉर दिस टेस्ट ऑल्सो इमिडिएटली राम टुक आउट वन एरो फ्रॉम द अक्षय तूनीरम अक्षय तूनीरम इज द इंस्ट्रूमेंट वेयर विच दे कीप द एरोज बाय टाइंग इट टू दैट बैक Ram took out one arrow from the Akshaya Tuniram, and he pulled it to the Kodandam. Kodandam is the bow of Rama. He pulled it till the ear, and he showed the arrow to one of the Sala Vruksham, the Sky Creeper Tree. The arrow has gone with such a power; it hit seven Sala Vrukshams, one after the other, one after the other. and all seven sala vruksham the trees have broken in one shot and after breaking the seven trees the arrow went and drilled the nearest mountain it gone into the mountain by drilling it and the arrow went down to the earth till it touches the patala lokam patala lokam is the next dimension which is below the earth so my friends imagine the power of arrow which rama has shot it broke seven trees in one shot it drilled the mountain it went down to the earth it drilled even the planet it touched the patala lokam the next dimension and silently the arrow came back and sat in akshay tuniram again that is the power of rama please keep in mind here rama has used a plain arrow he has not used any astram astram means energized arrow he has not energized the arrow he just left the plain arrow as it is and if he use astram imagine the destruction that can happen by seeing at this sugriva got mesmerized he was taken aback completely and he fell on the feet of rama and he has asked for forgiveness so rama has forgiven sugriva for conducting test for testing his capacity now sugriva has got complete confidence on ram's power and capacity that ram can kill wali the next minute sugriva has asked ram to move to the place where wali is staying and they want to kill wali ram has accepted for that and all started walking towards the wali's palace friend lakshman and sugriva are walking behind them ram is walking behind rama hanuma is walking silently by bending his head down just following what is happening now all these four reach the palace of wali ram is hiding behind a tree and waiting for wali to come out meanwhile Sugriva entered into the palace of Wali and started shouting challenging for a fight with Wali Immediately Wali heard this and he inquired who is shouting for 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 the fight with him Then the soldiers have told him that your brother Sugriva has come into the palace and he is challenging you for a fight Wali immediately surprised how Sugriva has got so much courage to challenge him for the fight but since he has entered into his palace and he is challenging he has to confront him for the challenge immediately wali wore the chain which lord shiva has blessed him he wore it to the neck and he came for a fight out of the palace wali and sugriva started fighting with each other start they started beating each other they started rolling on each other they started jumping on each other at this moment lord rama from his akshay tuniram he took out one arrow from behind the tree he started shooting them shooting wali with his arrow but here the problem comes sugriva and wali both looks very similar same to same they look like each other Now Rama got confused who is Wali who is Sugriva they are rolling on each other they are jumping on each other 
he is unable to identify who is Sugriva, who is Wali. If he shot the arrow without having clarity, there is a chance that there is a danger that even Sugriva may die by mistake. So Ram has kept quiet. He started hiding himself behind the tree without shooting the arrow. He had no choice than keeping quiet. Meanwhile, Sugriva got beaten by Wali badly. Sugriva was bleeding from his face completely. And Sugriva unable to tolerate the beating and he started running away towards Rishyamukha mountain. Sugriva has no choice than running and hiding in Rishyamukha mountain wherein Wali cannot enter into the mountain. Behind Sugriva, Ram, Lakshman and Hanuma also followed and again they assembled in Rishyamukha mountain. Sugriva has requested why Rama, why you didn't shoot Wali, why you didn't shoot any arrow to Wali, what is the reason? Rama has told the concern that both of you look like same, so definitely I can't shoot arrow to the wrong person. So I was unable to shoot the arrow. So now what to do? What is next plan? Ram has directed Lakshman to bring a mala with flowers. So Lakshman took some flowers, he stitched a mala and he has kept the mala to the neck of Sugriva. So that by looking at these flowers, Ram can identify who is Sugriva, who is Wadi. Now again, after some time, after taking the rest for some time, Sugriva said, again I will go for a fight. I want to kill Wali immediately. I don't want to delay. Again, Ram, Lakshman, Hanuma followed Sugriva. It was a night. So, Ram is hiding behind the tree and Sugriva again went into the palace of Wali and he started shouting and challenging for the fight again in the night. Now, immediately Wali got surprised Sugriva got, got beaten badly some time back. How did he get courage again to come back for a fight? But still, when someone challenges by entering into the palace, a real warrior will not say no to it. So, Wali started moving towards the fight by wearing the chain that has been given by Lord Shiva. Here, most importantly, Wali's wife, Tara has stopped Wali immediately and she said, Oh Wali, please understand, some time back, Sugriva got beaten by you badly and immediately he came back for the second fight. It means that Sugriva has someone behind him. He has planned for the fight. He kept someone, he has arranged someone to kill you. There is someone behind him, otherwise he is not going to challenge you second time like this. And even one of the spies of Kishkinda kingdom has told me that Sugriva has joined hands with Rama. Rama is the prince of Ayodhya kingdom. He has lot of astram and sastram with him. He has lot of knowledge of arrow shooting. So kindly don't go to fight Sugriva at this moment. It is not safe. Please understand my friends, when your wife advise you something, please listen to that. You know one can be a better minister than your wife. So kindly follow your wife advice. Take this lesson from Wali. When Tara advised Wali not to go, Wali, out of overconfidence on himself and out of having confidence on the chain that has been given by Lord Shiva, Wali said, as long as I'm wearing this chain, no one can kill me except Lord Shiva. Only Lord Shiva has got the capacity to kill me. No one else on this universe, not only on this planet, even in the entire universe. No one has got capacity to kill me except Lord Shiva. With this overconfidence, he entered into the fight. He joined the fight with Sugriva. Again, Sugriva and Wali started fighting with each other. This time, Sugriva is wearing some flowers mala around his neck so that Ram can identify who is Sugriva, who is Wali. 
Now, the fight has begun between Sugriva and Wali. The Ram is hiding behind a tree and he is observing the fight. The fight has begun. The fight was very brutal. Sugriva and Wali started beating each other, started rolling on each other in the fight. Sugriva has plucked out the trees and started hitting Wali. Wali started lifting big stones, started throwing at Sugriva. The fight was getting very brutal. Sugriva started bleeding from his mouth and nose. Slowly, Sugriva's strength is going down. The Wali's strength remains as it is because of the chain that has been given by Lord Shiva. As long as Wali is wearing the chain on his neck, no one can kill Wali except Lord Shiva. Now the fight is going on. The Sugriva is going down in the fight and Wali is dominating in the fight. Now Sugriva started looking around for Rama. He is waiting for Rama to shoot the arrow. At this moment, Ram has took out his bow called Kodandam and he has made a sound with the arrow and with the sound all these birds started flowing away the animals started running away out of scariness then Wali started looking at from where this sound has come by the moment Wali has found what is going on suddenly a very powerful energized arrow by Lord Rama came and hit his chest the next second Wali has fallen down. Please keep in mind, Wali did not die immediately because he has the chain in the neck which was given by Lord Shiva. That is the main reason he didn't die immediately. But he got injured badly. He fell down without having energy and looking around. At this moment, Ram, Lakshman, Sugriva, and Hanuma and few more people gathered around Wali. Now Wali first time saw Ram and he started questioning like this. Wali started shooting the questions very powerfully to Ram. Wali said, Oh, you are Mr. Ram, who is the elder son of Dasharath, who is the prince of Ayodhya kingdom. Being the prince of Ayodhya kingdom, are you not ashamed of shooting someone behind a tree how is it justified you are hiding behind a tree and you are shooting arrow to kill me a warrior a true warrior should not shoot any arrow by hiding behind the tree number one and number two we belongs to warner community warner belongs to monkey community so you are shooting an arrow to an animal when they are fighting with each other. The monkey's skin is also useless. The monkey's meat also useless. Then what is the purpose of killing a monkey when they are fighting? And number three, you have joined hands with Sugriva for searching whereabouts of your wife Sita. Instead of that, had you approached me to find the whereabouts of your Sita, I know where is Ravan hiding. Once upon a time, long back, Ravan had a fight with me. In the fight, I tied Ravan with my tail and I took him to the nearest ocean. I dipped Ravan in the ocean and I lifted him. Ravan has lost the fight with me and he came to an agreement with me that he never going to fight with me in future and he will be an assistant or he will be a subordinate to me. Ravan has promised me that he will be a subordinate to me here on. Had you approached me, I could have gone to Ravan and I could have beaten him and I could have brought your wife Sita. Instead, you join hands with Sugriva and Sugriva, you are expecting Sugriva that he will bring you whereabouts. I am more powerful than Sugriva. I thought you are very intelligent. I thought you are very powerful. 
I thought you were a dharmatma, you were a virtue person. You are hiding behind the tree and you are killing me. How is it justified? How is it dharma? Wali started shooting questions like this. We all had from our childhood one big doubt. How can Ram kill Wali by hiding behind the tree? The explanation what Ram is going to give for Wali's questions are really convincing, are really beautiful, are really amazing. These answers will clarify all our doubts that we are having from the childhood. Killing Wali by hiding behind the tree. How Ram has justified this? Let us understand in the next episode. Kindly follow my series of Life History of Hanuma. Thank you. Namaste.